dear friends mass aspirants is a collective of mathematics students research scholars and teachers across india and abroad initiated by myself in 2017 and we used to organize online problem solving sessions and online test series to help the students who are preparing for different pg phd entrance examinations as a part of that series today we have a session on linear algebra so we have miss binni sharma from haryana with us to handle a problem solving session on linear algebra miss binni uh, did her msc from maharshi dayanandi university rohtak haryana and she qualified csr net with jrf and gate examinations and currently pursuing phd at maharshi dayanandi university rohtak haryana so all of you know that uh, this year's gate examination is on February 4th and IIT jam examination is on February 11th and linear algebra is one of the crucial subject uh, that uh, from which we can expect more questions in any of the competitive examinations like this. Uh, so I'm sure that today's session will certainly will be very helpful in your final round preparations for these examinations. So I would like to express my sincere thanks and gratitude to Ms. Binni for being with us, for being with Math Aspirants groups. Uh, I welcome everyone to this program. Welcome. Thank you, sir. For uh, giving me this opportunity and I'm very happy to be as a uh, group member of this Math Aspirant and uh, I hope this session helped the students. So a uh, very good morning to all. I'm Bini Sharma, a research scholar from Department of Mathematics, Mashe Dhyanan University, Rota. Today I'm here uh, to uh, uh, give session on the problem solving that is related to the linear algebra and in which I have specifically uh, considered the concept related to the rank linear system and vector space, subspace, and dimensions. Am I audible? Okay, ma'am. Uh, if you have any query between, then you can ask. So, okay. uh, without, uh, I'm not uh, giving any theory or uh, we just move to the uh, direct problems so that you can apply these concepts in your exams. So this is the first problem in which we have given a matrix. Uh, that is, you can see A is matrix 3 cross 5. Okay. Now B is a 5 cross 5 real matrix such that AB is a 0 matrix. Now you have to give the possible maximum rank of the bank, uh, rank of B. So what we have given, A is a 3 cross 5 matrix and B is a 5 cross 5 matrix. Then AB is a matrix of 3 cross 5 and it is given that AB is a 0 matrix. So the rank of AB equals to 0. Now there is a Frobenius inequality. What it says, rank of A plus me rank of B is less than equals to rank of AB plus me N. Now, what is N? The N is here the common factor that is 5. Okay. And the rank of AB equals to 0. It is given from the situation AB is a 0 matrix. Now, we have to find the rank of A. So, you can calculate the rank of A by, uh, by changing it into the REF form, that is row Eklund form. So, 1 minus 1, 0 by applying, uh, applying the elementary row operations. One, that is 1 minus 1, 0, R2 minus R1. Okay. 1 minus 0, that is 1, 1 and 2. Now R3 minus R, applying the R3 minus R1 operation, 0, 0, 4, 4, and 3. Okay. Now we apply the R3 minus 4, R2. 
so what we get one one zero zero one zero one one zero one one two zero zero four minus four zero zero and three minus four that is minus five so the here is pivot elements are three so rank of a is three do you have any problem or no so the rank of a is three plus my rank of b so rank of b is less than equal to two five minus three that is two the th maximum rank can be it means uh, possible rank of b can be two one and zero so, uh, they ask the maximum possible rank of b then it can be two so the answer will be two got it got it So the next question is this uh, question uh, asked uh, Jam 2022. Now we have to find the rank of this four cross six matrix. Okay, the entries are from the real numbers. So simply we can convert into one one zero one zero zero one one zero. Zero one zero one zero one one zero one one. So simply we applying the first operation is R two minus R one, and from this we get zero minus one minus one 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 zero. Okay, and sim. Remain uh, R three and R four remains the same zero zero one zero one one. Now uh, we apply the R three. The second operation will be R three plus R two. So what we get here one 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 zero 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 minus one minus one. One one zero. Now adding this becomes zero. This becomes one, two, one one, zero zero, one zero one one. The next operation will be R four plus R three. Then it will become one one one. Zero 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 minus one two one one and it will become zero two two and two. So now you can see the pi uh, key elements or the pivot elements. That is four elements are there. So the rank of A will be the four. The answer will be the D. Uh, is there any uh, problem related to the rank concept? You can ask. Now, the third question is which of the following is a subspace of the real vector space RQ? So, we have to find the, uh, uh, we have to check the uh, which one of these the subspace. So, now you can see that D option here it is given as x plus 2y minus 3z plus 1 equals to 0. Now there is a constant 1. So whenever there is a constant, it will never be a subspace. This type of equation always pass, uh, passes through. If uh, this type of equation passes through origin, then it will become a subspace. Otherwise, it never becomes a subspace. So D option. Uh, we will cancel out the D option. The C is Y Z. If we have that three order tuple, the uh, three order tuple that is X Y Z belongs to R Q and Y Z equals to zero. It means either Y zero or the Z zero. Clear. Now I have 
taken two elements that is u in which this uh, yz equals to zero condition will be fulfilled that is one one zero okay now i have taken the other element that is one zero and the one now you can check when we uh, multiply the y and z component then it will become zero it means u and v belongs to this set okay but when we apply the u plus v then it becomes 2 1 1 but here yz is not equals to 0 then two elements u and v belongs to this set but their uh, sum u plus v it means this is are not closed under this uh, subspace so c option will be cancelled out now the b is x y z belongs to r q where y belongs to a q it means y belongs to rational number like i have uh, take uh, let's take a element one one zero and i have taken alpha which is a scalar from the r because there is a vector space over the r cube over r so i have taken the root two now when we apply alpha u that it becomes root two into root two into zero now the the y component it doesn't belongs to q so scalar multiplication also not fulfill here so the option b is also cancel out okay now there is option a which says y plus z square plus 2x minus 3y square equals to 0 so here when there is a square it means y plus z equals to 0 and 2x minus and 2x minus 3y also 0 here we get y equals to minus z and x equals to 3y by 2 okay so what type of a uh, tuple we can get from here x is 3 by 2y y is y and z equals to minus y so this is the one dimensional subspace so uh, the which of the following is a subspace so a will be the right answer clear the next question is let a uh, given m is a matrix of 3 cross 3 which of the following statements is or are correct okay so this is the simple problem with related to the rank 2 3 7 6 4 7 and the 4 6 14 okay by applying the operations minus uh, we apply the operation that is r2 minus 3 r1 6 minus 0 4 minus 9 that is minus 5 7 minus minus 14 okay now apply the r3 minus 2 r1 what we get 4 minus 0 6 0 and the 0 the last row becomes zero the rank of this matrix m is two so the first option is correct the rank of m is three that is two then b is cancel out the rows of m are linearly independent now you can see rank of m equals to two which is less than three it means rows are ld linearly dependent so the C option also incorrect. The determinant of M equals to 0. Now you can see the, row, uh, the rank of M is not 3. So the determinant of M will be 0. So the option D correct. The answer will be A and D. The next question is let v1 v2 vn be the column vectors of a non zero 9 cross 9 real matrix a let a1 a2 a9 belongs to r not all zero such that summation i1 to 9 ai vi equals to zero then the system ax equals to summation i1 to 9 vi has 
no solution unique solution and the options are given so what we have given there are nine vectors v1 v2 vn and the help of these column vectors they make a nine cross nine real matrix like you can see we have a, a column vectors v1 v2 v3 and v9 okay so with the help of column vectors they make a 9 cross 9 real matrix now what other condition is given there are uh, scalars a1 a2 a9 are coming from the real entries and no toll are zero and their linear combination equals to zero it means what they are given vi's column vectors are ld this is the definition of the linearly dependent so what we get from here these vectors are ld linearly dependent okay like you can say they are a nine cross nine we can take three uh vector column vector like this zero one zero zero one zero okay so uh, from this condition uh, we can get vi's are the ld linearly dependent vectors now that they ask a is the system ax now i am saying this is the a matrix and they ask ax equals to summation i129 vi has what type of solutions like they make this type of matrix like summation vi i am saying this is the b okay so a augmented b matrix can be formed as 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 okay now we have b is the summation of vi that is one two zero okay now now you can see when vi is uh, are ld so the rank of a rank of a never be equal to cannot be equal to n because these are ld if these are this is 3 cross 3 then rank of a always less than equal to m clear from the ld uh, uh, condition we can get rank of a can net, uh, can never be equal to the n this is always equal, uh, less than equal to n now whenever you have to check the uh, linear system has no solution unique solution the infinitely many solution there is a condition that rank of a equals to rank of a augmented b equal to n less than n then when it happens then we can say this is the unique solution it happens then we say infinitely many solution and third condition is the rank of a is not equal to the rank of a augmented b then we can say this this system has no solution so these are the concept now uh, from our question we uh, we got rank of a is less than n the rank of a ne cannot uh, uh, never equal to the n so we can say this system never have a unique solution got it so, so option b cancel out here the possible condition uh, left are whether this uh, this system has infinite solution or the no solution because unique solution uh, we have discarded the option of the unique solution the c option says more than one but only finitely many solution this uh, it never happens there are only three conditions whether it is unique infinitely or no solution so c is a very fancy option so uh, uh, CO is automatically discarded. Now the, we have op, uh, left with the two option, no solution or infinitely many solution. Now the concept here applies. Like we have, when, whenever we applied submission V is I. Now VI is a LD, okay. So we can say whether they are, uh, some of them are scalar to scalar multiple of each other, or we can say there's something VR which is a which can be written as the linear combination of their 
previous vi's this is at the definition of the linearly dependency so from this example you can see whenever this this type of equation um, condition have given to us so this will always give because whatever their uh, de uh, dependence relation are here it also shows here because b is come uh, b is formed with the help of summation of vi's so this always gives the infinitely many solution okay because this type of dependency relation remains with the vector b and it never uh, uh, you were never met like situation where here it will give uh, uh, zero but here it is become one no it will never uh, become such a situation because there is a uh, because b vector form with the help of summation of vis so the no solution is not the, there will be the infinitely many solution uh, clear or uh, you can ask if uh, some student have query in this question then you can ask you got it my point or uh, can i move further yes ma'am it's clear okay so that the uh, next question is let w be a subspace of m3r here it is a w subspace of all mat all uh, matrix 3 cross 3 matrix where entries are coming from the real number okay consisting of all matrices with the property that the sum of entries in each row is zero and the sum of entries in each column is zero the dimension of w now we have a like three cross three matrix and the entries are coming from the r now two condition are also given us that is sum of entries in each row is zero and the entries in each column is zero like there is a three three elements because we have given the three cross three matrix now we are you have to make that is a1 a12 a13 should be zero a21 a22 a230 a31 a32 a330 and similarly with the column okay now you have to check how much freedom you have okay like you can put any number here like i'm giving it at, at uh, giving it as a a and you can also freely choose the b the second option but to make the sum row zero you have to take minus a plus b correct because we have to satisfy this condition sum of entries in each row is zero similarly you can put any number here and as well as here but to make some zero you have to put c plus d minus of c plus d now to satisfy the entries in each column is zero you are restricted to put this as minus a plus c and similarly minus b plus d and here okay to make some this is zero so how much freedom you have you can uh, you can put four elements by your own choice okay so the dimension will be the four clear and this type of question like i am saying this will be the n cross n matrix now there will be the n elements and similar like this so you have freedom to uh, put any values there will be an n minus one element because last one is automatically filled to satisfy this uh, condition that is row sum is zero and similarly there in next row there also an n minus one element you can put by your own choice and so on so there are the uh, last last row is automatically filled to satisfy the uh, column sum zero so there is n minus one cross n minus one element so dimension of this type of subspace 
will this n minus 1 cross n minus 1 in in this case n is equal to 3 so 3 minus 1 cross 3 minus 1 that is 2 into 2 equals to 4 the answer will be 4 you can solve by this type of example or you uh, these are the general concept got it so moving on to the next question it has been asked consider r4 with the inner product xy xy inner product is given as summation r124 xi yi and x is the four order tuple and y also given let m m is given as the uh, x1 x2 x3 belongs to r4 such that x1 equals to x3 and m did m complement denotes the orthogonal complement of m now you have to find the dimension of m complement now uh, first we will uh, define the uh, dimension of the m so m is given as x1 x2 x3 x4 okay and in which x1 equals to x3 so you can write these are the set like this x1 x2 x1 x4 so dimension of m will be you have only three of the three choices that is three or there is an op option that is n minus may ally conditions sorry n minus ally conditions so n here are four order tuples so four and one ally condition is given that is one equals to three so dimension of m equals to three so there are two uh, methods to find the dimension of m now m and m complement intersection of these always gives us zero subspace because these are the complement and r4 can be written as direct sum of uh, direct sum of m and m complement so dimension of dimension of m plus dimension of m complement equals to dimension of r4 okay now we have already find out the a dimension of m that is 3 plus dimension of m complement equals to dimension of r4 is 4 so dimension of m complement is 4 minus 3 that is 1 so the answer will be the 1 so in this question we have just first find uh, find found out the dimension of m and then we applied this concept that m R4 can be written as direct sum of M and M orthogonal complement. And whenever there is a uh, like sum A plus B. Okay, so the dimension of A plus B given as the dimension of A plus dimension of B minus my dimension of A intersection B. Okay, but uh, where we have given M intersection M complement always a zero subspace. So the dimension of R4 equals to dimension of M plus may dimension of M orthogonal complement. So by these concepts, we uh, can easily find out the dimension of M orthogonal complement. The next question is the dimension of vector space of all symmetric matrices A of order N cross N n can be a greater than or equal to 2 with real entries a110 and trace is 0 so like i am taking n cross n matrix now what we have given the symmetric matrix so and a11 is 0 it is given that a110 in symmetric matrix that is A12 and A21. So, when in symmetric matrix, when I fill this entry, then A21 automatically fill because A, what symmetric matrix says A transpose equals to A, that is A12 equals to A21. Okay. Now, 
uh, what other condition like a1 uh, if i am if i have filled the a13 entry then a31 automatically get filled now the other condition is uh, trace is zero so trace is zero like you have what this trace is a11 a22 a33 and plus ann equals to zero now it is given that a11 is already zero and to make that trace some zero you can uh, you can put only n minus one element by you, your own choice because the last element will be the ann will be the minus of some of their previous elements got it like a n minus one a n minus one a n minus one so in this to this is the, the it will be the zero the last uh, will be sorry the uh, to make the trace some zero the last is the linear uh, combination of the previous diagonal elements that is a n n equals to a n n equals to minus a 2 2 a 3 3 a plus so on a n minus 1 n minus 1 okay so in the symmetric matrix what you get like i am showing you on the 3 cross 3 matrix a 2 1 a 2 2 a 3 a 2 a 2 3 a 3 1 a 3 2 and a 3 3 uh, so when you put a 1 2 it get automatically filled a 1 3 and this this so this type of in n cross n the first is we have only one choice in second we can put two elements that is two three i'm on uh, going on the n cross n matrix and last is the n minus one and over the diagonal over the diagonal we have only the n minus two because a one one zero and the left they are uh, in on diagonal elements they are total n elements so a11 is already given as 0 and last is the linear sum of the previous elements so we have only the n minus 2 options left okay now we have apply the n into n minus 1 by 2 plus n minus 2 that is n square minus n plus 2n minus 4 by 2 and it is given as n square plus n minus 4 by 2 okay now n square plus n minus 4 by 2 this is the first option so in this question what we did we have given a symmetric matrix okay in symmetric matrix we know there we always give uh, have options like this we can put first element then this is automatically get filled so there is first in first row there is a one in second a12 and the this a23 can choose by us and similarly like this but in what we have given the a110 and the trace is zero so we have only n minus two options to fill the uh, those entries okay so just we sum these uh, possible uh, conditions and we get the n square plus n minus 4 by 2. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. The next question is let Mn denotes the vector space of all n cross n real matrices. Among the following subsets of Mn, decide which are the linear subspaces. Now we have to check which of the option is the becomes linear subspace or not. The first option is uh, V1 says A belongs to Mn that is A is n cross n matrix such that A is a non-singular matrix. Now we have to check whether it is a linear subspace or a not. Like I'm uh, saying A is a uh, A belongs to V1 such that A is a non-singular. So I have taken this option. Okay. B also belongs to the B, uh, V1. And because this is a non-singular matrix, so determinant of A is non-zero. 
then a can be belongs to v1 so a belongs to v1 and b belongs to that it should be non singular matrix so i am taking this as determinant of b is non zero now uh, now we have to check whether they are closed ended addition or not so i am taking a plus b that is equals to 0 0 0 and 0 uh, now uh, uh, whether a plus b belongs to v1 or not so the determinant of a plus b equals to 0 so a plus b doesn't belongs to v1 two elements are coming from the v1 but their sum is not going to v1 it means this is a, not a linear space, subspace so v1 is cancel out now uh, moving on to the second option what it says v2 is a uh, sub, uh, v2 is a set uh, in which a belongs to mn such that determinant of a equals to 0 similarly i can take options like uh, a is a uh, if a belongs to v2 then their determinant should be a zero so i am taking this determinant of a is zero and b is zero 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 one similarly determinant of b is also zero now i have to check the their closer under the addition what we get one zero zero one but here determinant of a plus b is not equal to uh, 0 so but to uh, uh, to belong to the v2 determinant of L, uh, matrix should be 0 but here a plus b is not determinant of a plus b is not 0 so a plus b doesn't belongs to v2 where a plus b is a clo uh, closer under the addition so we can say v2 is not a subspace now moving to the third option that is v3 v3 is a uh, all the uh, matrix whose trace a is zero so like if a belongs to a belongs to v3 so their trace will be zero it is given if b belongs to v3 so trace of b is also zero now trace of a plus b equals to this is the property of trace trace of a plus trace of b that is equals to trace of a is 0 trace of b is 0 that is trace of a plus b equals to 0 so closer addition is satisfied now we have to check trace of alpha a. okay scalar multiplication trace of alpha a, that is equal to trace a and it is given as 0 so trace of alpha a also belongs to v3 so this will become a linear subspace now we have to check the v4 b a a belongs to m n where b is some fixed matrix in m n like i'm saying uh, a belongs to v4 so the matrix can be written as b a because b is fixed matrix some fixed matrix okay I am saying C belongs to V4. So it written as the B C. Okay, now we have to check their addition. So B A plus B C we can write as B common and A plus C. So there is some matrix B and A plus C. Okay, so we can write B into A plus C and to uh, enter into the v4 we have to the form will be the ba so this type of uh, so uh, a plus c belongs to the v4 similarly b alpha a so we can write that uh, some b sorry alpha b a b alpha a okay so we can write alpha a into the uh, in in the terms of b into alpha a. so the old uh, uh, two properties of cl uh, closer under addition and the scalar multiplication are satisfied so the uh, this v4 also becomes a linear subspace the option the correct option will be the three and the four okay the next question 
Yes. Hello, ma'am. Yes. 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 So the previous question is related. Uh, this is asking linear surfaces. Uh, are there any concept of non-linear surfaces? Uh, no linear sub no there is only a linear subspaces i mean it's only subspace then we can say that yeah but uh yeah you can say subspace uh, simply yeah, actually yeah. They, actually linear algebra there is only a linear uh uh concept the uh, paper is a linear algebra there is a non non-linear things are not there got my point so okay yes so there is no difference between the linear subspace or the subspace we have to check the conditions of the subspaces that are uh, uh, closer under addition and the scalar multiplication clear yeah yeah so question clear okay moving to the next question There are two conditions that is P and Q. What P says, let M belongs to R. Uh, that is, M is a uh, M belongs to R M cross N. With M is greater than N, greater than equal to two. If R rank of M equals to N, then the system of linear equation M of X equals to zero has x0 as the only solution. Now you have to check whether p is a true or false. So what we have given, m is m cross n matrix. You can let it as m into m cross n matrix where m is greater than n and greater than equal to 2. Okay. And it is also given as rank of m equals to n. Then they, uh, they are asking, then the system of mx equals to 0 has x equals to 0 as the only solution. What he is asking, m of x equals to 0 has only solution, that is only the trivial solution. Now, in the homogeneous case, you know the rank of a, if rank of a equals to n, number of variables then there is a unique solution and unique solution is also the trivial solution that is x equal to 0 is the only solution of the homogeneous problem the second condition is if rank of a is less than equal to n then there will be infinitely many solutions so these are the concept related to the homogeneous linear systems now uh, it has given to us the rank of m equals to n that is n equals to the number of variables so in this case that there will be unique solution and the unique solution will be the zero solution also be called as the trivial solution so p uh, statement is true got it now what is q statement is let e belongs to r n cross f is n cross n matrices and the entries are from the real numbers n is greater than or equal to 2 is non-zero matrix this is not equal to zero matrix this is the non-zero matrix such that e cube equals to zero now you have given e cube equals to zero this is the non-zero matrix but their cube is zero so we can say that this is a nilpotent matrix okay then i plus e square is a singular matrix now they are asking whether it uh, it's determined determinant of i plus what they are asking determinant of i plus e square is zero or not okay now you know uh, this is the extra concept i am including here the eigenvalues so in uh, the eigenvalues of the nilpotent matrix always zero okay so all all eigenvalues of e uh, e will be the zero now and the uh, eigenvalues of the identity matrix are one 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 
take e three cross three matrix because n is get, uh, given as n is greater than equal to two. So I am taking n equals to three. So the nilpotent uh, eigenvalues of nilpotent matrix are all zero, and the eigenvalues of ident matrix are one. So what is the eigenvalues of i plus e square will be the i square e square zero 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 and one plus zero that is one 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 and determinant of i plus e square we can write product of these eigenvalues that is one into one that is one not equal to zero that is not equal to zero then it always a known singular matrix but but they have given us singular matrix then q is a wrong option the uh, fourth option is p is false q is true wrong p false p q true false that is c option r c option is correct got it any problem you can ask um, is it okay to just add the uh, eigen values and say that will Actually, uh, your voice are not clear to me. Uh, can you repeat your question? So you added the eigenvalues and said that this will be the eigenvalue of the sum, right? Hello, am I audible? Yes. Ah, so uh, you need some conditions to do that, right? You can't just do it for any. Matrix. Because there is an identity matrix, then we can easily add these eigenvalues. If there is any other matrix like A, B, uh, then we cannot add uh, the eigenvalues of two matrices. Okay. Because E, uh, uh, when whenever there uh, is a uh, identity matrix. And the other is a non-identity and can any type of matrix. Then we can add the eigenvalues. Yes, yes. But okay, yes. yes, but if if there is a uh, like if there is uh, there is a, a matrix. Okay, I'm like you have two matrix A and B, and eigenvalues of A is lambda one, lambda two, and eigenvalues of B is mu one and mu two. Then A plus B. Eigenvalues of A plus B. I'm not saying the eigenvalues will be lambda one plus lambda two, lambda one plus mu one. No, I'm not saying this. If there is a condition that is like identity is a matrix and E is a matrix, then we can add the mat uh, eigenvalues. Got it? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Moving to the next question, let X be a real uh, non-linear space, and X naught is a set such that X belongs to uh, X and norm of X equals to one. Okay, so this is the condition of uh, all elements which belongs to X naught that their uh, norm should be the one. If X naught contains two di uh, distinct points X and Y, like X belongs to X naught. Then their norm should be the one. Y belongs to X naught. The norm of Y is also one. And what it also contains the line segment joining them. Okay. Then which of the following statement is true? The line segment we can write as X and Y belongs to X naught. Then we can write lambda X plus one minus lambda Y. And this belongs to line segment belongs to the x naught. So the norm of lambda x plus one minus lambda y should be the one because this element of the x naught and the uh, x naught condition of x naught the norm should be the one. This is the uh, now I'm taking lambda equals to like as one by two that is x plus y norm by 2 equals to 1 that is norm of x plus y equals to 2 okay so what we have found out norm of x equals to 1 norm of y 1 and the norm of x plus y equals to 2 
now check the first condition that this is 2 1 plus 1 first condition satisfy is also satisfy here but 2 square that is 4 and 1 plus 1 so the condition is wrong here and 2 equals to 2 into 1 into 1 this is right now we have to check whether x y are li or ld so i am taking it as let x equals to 1 0 and y equals to 0 uh, so the first condition we have already checked uh, the i'm um, taking uh, i was taking the uh, uh to uh, example like one zero and the v is zero one now norm of u and norm of v equals to one now these are the ld uh, li so uh, the, this is already discarded and the ld and ld what is true so is true we have asked so in this option that this is discarded ld got it that is uh, the norm of u and norm of v equals to one and already satisfied now they are asking x and y are ld so this is the not case here the uh, we can take these uh, order uh, the order tuple as li condition so these two options are also discarded the option first is the right option got it <laughs> I have a doubt, ma'am. So, yes, how, yes, how are you know. taking u and v as uh, 0, 1, and 1, 0? We are only given with uh, a real, a real norm linear space, right? So, how are you uh, giving points? Uh, so, uh, this is the op I am taking as this uh, the norm of x equals to 1. The real norm linear space, what it says, uh, this uh, the re, uh, the real numbers so you can take the order tuples here also na okay uh why uh okay man fine i'm taking that as like what it says norm linear space that is, there are conditions of the non negativity, the triangle inequality, and the scalar multiplication. They are norm linear space with. So, there are options like norm of x equals non zero, uh, their triangle inequality, norm of x plus norm of y. So, in uh, so the real num the real r, jo r the real set also satisfy the condition of the norm linear space that's why i'm taking at these options okay okay so i misunderstood the question so when they say let x be a real norm linear space it means you can take any real norm linear space is it yes so i'm okay so, to okay. discard the Thank options you. i'm taking this r simple r that's why i'm taking these op these options With the help of examples, you can discard the options now. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any questions? Uh, Ma'am, I have one doubt too. Yes, you can ask. Uh, so you are saying that we have an example uh, for u and v such that uh, the equation is satisfied and it is linearly independent. So, uh, you are discarding the option that is linearly dependent. Just because we have an example on linearly independent, does that mean we can, uh, there, there won't exist an example on linearly dependent? So, the, uh, the you asked that I am taking those examples which are correctly same with the uh, condition which have been given to in our question. what i'm saying i'm taking these example and these two example satisfy the condition given in the equation right or not 
Yes, ma'am. So when I am taking this, the norm of u equals to one, not the norm of v equals to one. But here, these are the Li vectors. Okay. So the I am taking the similar condition that has been asked in the question. So I can discard the Ld option because I have the options which is Li. But they are saying this will always the Ld vectors. No, we have the Li vectors here. And also, they are satisfying okay. the uh, conditions of the question. Okay, ma'am. Okay, okay. Uh, so the option means that uh, it's like uh, the equation will be satisfied, and x y is always linearly independent. Yeah, they go in second. In second option, they are saying it satisfy the this type of uh, condition. Got it. And the x y always will be L D. Oh, okay, ma'am. What it says. X, Y are always L, D. No, we have options. Okay. Got okay, it? Okay, ma'am. Understood, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay. Can I move to the next question? Or is there any question related to this? You can freely ask. So essentially, you took uh, R2 as the example and you took norm as modulus of X plus modulus of Y. That's what you have done, right? Uh, can you repeat? As in, uh, you said mode of X, uh, norm of X plus Y equals norm X plus norm Y by saying that norm uh, X plus Y is actually 1 comma 1 and uh, you are considering that uh, norm of X plus Y equal to 2. No, no, no. The, on the first part, I have uh, used uh, to prove the first part. I have taken this condition, the line segment. This is the convex combination, and this is the linear uh, uh, equation of the line segment. Also, do you know the uh, equation of the line segment? We can yeah. write here as lambda x plus one minus lambda y. Okay. Okay. Now I am taking lambda equals to one by two. As is this a uh, uh, line segment? So lambda belongs to zero and zero, uh, zero to one. Got it? Yes. yes. So I'm taking lambda equals to one by two. That is x plus y. And now this is the line segment which belongs to x naught. And the condition of x naught says norm of the element should be the one. So the norm of this element one. Got got my point? Yes, yes. The norm of x, norm of y equals to 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And the mm. x and y also belongs to x naught. So norm yeah, of x yeah. equals to 1 and norm of y equals to 1. The yeah, only, so, the, mm -hmm. only the second part I have uh, took this uh, option. The first okay, part, okay. Ha, yes. Okay. okay, so from that you are getting that it is actually mod x plus mod y. okay thank you okay got it yes okay now can i move yes ma'am okay the next question is consider r3 as a vector space with the usual operations of the vector addition and the scalar multiplication let x belongs to r3 uh Define subspaces W1 and W2. So we have given two subspaces W and W2. And what they have been asking, dimension E. Dimension U denotes the dimension of the subspace of U. Okay. This is just the notation. Which of the following statements are two? Dimension of W1 equals to dimension of W2. Now to find the dimension of W1, we can apply the formula N minus Li conditions. So N is the uh, R3, so n is 3 minus Li. There is only one Li condition that is 1. So, dimension of W1 equals to 2. Okay. Now, similarly, dimension of W2 equals to there are three tuples that is 3 minus there is also a one Li condition that is 1. Dimension of W2 equals also a 2. So, the first option is correct. Now, the second option says dimension of W1 plus W2 minus dimension of R3 equals to 1. 
uh, you know na dimension is the number of element in the basis so the dimension of w1 is 2 plus dimension of w2 is 2 and dimension of r3 is 3 that is what 4 minus 3 1 equals to 1 that is correct so the option 2 is also correct now uh, you have to check dimension of w1 intersection w2 so there are two concepts here whenever you have to find the dimension of w1 plus w2 okay and this type of equations given there are two options like you have you have given like generating sets so whenever you have given uh, these type of sets then you can easily uh, find the dimension of W1 plus W2 by joining W1 union W2. You include all the generating set and find the rank. And it will give a, gives you the dimension of W1 plus W2. And the second is whenever you have given this homogeneous type equations, then you can easily find dimension of W1 intersection W2. And it is given as like these two conditions are given. You can write matrix as 1, 2, minus 1, 2, 0, and 3. Okay. Now find the rank of this matrix is uh, sorry, this is minus 1, 2, minus 2, 0, minus 4, and 3 uh, plus 5. Okay. So rank of this matrix is 2. And you know the uh, rank, uh, whenever you have to give the dimension of homogeneous system, you can write, you, uh, write it as n minus r. n minus 3, rank of this matrix is 2, that is 1. The dimension of W1 intersection W2 equals to 1. Got it? Now you have to find the dimension of W1 plus W2. You can write dimension of W1 plus dimension of w2 and already you have found out the dimension of w1 intersection w2 w1 is 2 w2 is 2 and dimension of w1 intersection that is 1 equals to 3 but it has given us to 2 that is the wrong option clear so the next is the Ma'am, can you elaborate the last uh, option? Dimension W1 intersection W2. Yes. Wait. So, whenever you have given these type of homogeneous system equations, okay, so you can simply calculate the dimension of w1 intersection w2 by combining these equations so these uh, we can write with the help of these equation the matrix 1 2 minus 1 2 0 3 okay and whenever you have to find the uh, dimension of the linear systems so there will be a formula n minus r so we have just combined these linear equations. So rank of this matrix is 2. And to find the uh, dimension of the linear system, we have given as n minus r. And r is 2. n is 3. That is 1. The dimension of w1 intersection w2 equals to 1. So whenever you have the linear system, the dimension of intersection can be found out with the help of n minus r formula, where r is the rank of this matrix. Okay, ma'am. Got it. But whenever, like, agar, uh, whenever you have the uh, op, uh, given op option, uh, the question r, like, the set uh, w1 is given as this. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay. This is the generating set of W1. Like W2 is 1, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0. And this is the 
generating set of W2. Whenever uh, the quotient type will be in the form of generating set, then first you will check the dimension of W1 plus W2. And dimension of W1 plus W2 is generated by W1 union W2. Span of W1 union W2. So you just combine these vectors like this. Uh, the, uh, the last row will be the 0 to 0. Okay. So whenever you make this matrix combining these uh, generating set, so you can find out the dimension of W1 plus W2. So I'm uh, teaching, I'm uh, uh, giving the uh, option whenever you have the homogeneous system, first we will go on the dimension of W1 intersection W2. If the question is in the form of the generating set, then you first uh, find out the dimension of W1 plus W2. Okay. So that you can easily find out the dimensions. Any questions? Uh, clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, next question is Let V be a real vector space consisting of all polynomials in one variable with real coefficients having degree at most 6 together with a 0 polynomial, then which of the following is true? Now we have to find the whether it is a subspace of V or not. And the V is given as a P6R that is the set of all polynomials whose degree at most 6 and the coefficients are coming for the real numbers R and with the 0 polynomial okay this has given to us now we have to find the uh, whether this option is a subspace of v or not the first option is f1 by 2 doesn't belongs to q but uh, like f1 by 2 doesn't belongs to like i'm saying that f1 by 2 equals to root 2 but on the scalar multiplication like I'm taking root 2. Root 2 as a scalar. When we uh, multiply the, the f1 by 2 root 2 equals it becomes 2 that belongs to q. So the first option is wrong. Similarly f1 by 2 equals to 1. Whenever there is a constant like this it will never be a subspace. Because in on closer, in on addition, it will become another constant. Then it will never be the same. So this type of option is always never be a subspace of V. Similarly, this type of option is also not a subspace. So it will also discard it. Now the option third, automatically option three will be right. But we will discuss about the option three. That is F1 by 2 equals to F1 is a subspace of V like we have. Uh, uh, we have taken f belongs to v so f1 by 2 equals to f of 1 g belongs to v that is g of 1 by 2 equals to g of 1 then we simply take f of g f of g of 1 by 2 equals to f of 1 by 2 plus g of 1 by 2 and it will becomes uh, f of 1 plus may g of 1 and it will become f of g1. Similarly, you can check the L5. Okay, so the option 3 is correct. This is a very simple uh, question. Now, uh, the next question is consider the system of the linear equation. So, we have given the linear equations in x, y, z, t. So just we sim and they are asking about. Uh, on lambda 1, there will be unique solution. If lambda 2, there is an infinitely many solution and the so on. So we just make the matrix, coefficient matrix that is 1, 1, 0, 1, and 2, 0, 0, minus 4, 
वन 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 जीरो वन माइनस थ्री माइनस वन माइनस वन एंड ऑगोमेट्रिक मैट्रिक्स विद द हेल्प ऑफ द कॉलम वेक्टर दैट इज फोर सेवन फाइव एंड लैमडा ओके बाय अप्लाइंग द ऑपरेशंस वी कैन फाइंड आउट द we are applying the first operation is r2 minus 2 r1 that is 2 minus 2 0 minus 2 0 minus 4 minus 2 that is minus 6 7 minus minus 1 1 minus that is next operation is r3 minus r1 that is 1 minus 1 0 0 1 1 1 1 okay And the net, uh, last is R four minus R one. That is one minus one zero minus three minus four minus one minus eleven lambda minus four. Okay. The next is one one zero one four zero minus two zero minus six minus one. And the uh, zero minus four minus one minus eleven lambda minus four zero zero one minus one and one. The next is sorry, I have a less space here, so I am writing like this. That is. Minus two, multiply R three minus of uh, R three minus two into R two. That it will become zero minus one one lambda four lambda minus four plus two. That is lambda minus two. And the last will be one minus one and the one. Okay. And when we add the these last two rows, that it will become zero zero, and it will become lambda minus one. Okay. Here it will become lambda minus one. So when lambda will one, then it will give the infinitely many solution. Okay, then it says if lambda one, then it has a unique solution. This is wrong. If lambda one, if lambda two, if lambda equals to two, it will give the no solution. This is also a wrong option. If lambda two, then it has unique. That is also a wrong. If lambda equals to one, the system has infinitely many solution. This is the right option. The third option will be the correct option. Clear. The next question is for a four cross matrix M belongs to M four C that is four cross four matrix and the entries are coming from the complex set and M complement denote the matrix obtained from the M by replacing each entry of M by its complex conjugate. Okay, consider the real space that is H. M belongs to M four C such that M transpose equals to M conjugate. That is, we can write it as M transpose transpose equals to M conjugate. It will become this, and this becomes star. And this is the property of the Hermitian matrices. You know about the Hermitian matrices. What it Hermitian matrices? The diagonal element al always real number. And if you fill this uh, element, it automatically get filled here. Okay, like A star equals to A, where A I I belongs to R always, and Like use one two one plus iota, then it will become here one minus iota. So you filled here this uh, 
element get automatically get filled okay so the dimension uh, they are asking about the dimension of the edge so the real numbers so there only one option you can put here r real numbers also okay so there are n elements on the diagonal and uh, in the, as a symmetric matrix we apply the this type of so in first there will be the first element in the second there will be two element you can uh, free, uh, independently can uh, fill any options which you want to fill and there will be this and on the uh, this upper diagonal there will be a n minus 1 element okay but these entries can be uh, are are coming from the complex number so there will be a two option because in c there is a one and iota in on the basis of c there is a two elements one and iota so the uh, to fill any element there uh, you have two choices okay but on real number there is only one choice so is that's why i am writing here it is as n so here it is n into n minus 1 by 2 but on every element there are two options so that's why i multiply this into 2 okay that is n square minus n plus n equals to n square now they have given n equals to 4 that is 4 square equals to 16 the option will be the 16 any questions You can ask if uh, there is any doubt. Oh. Ma'am, we have field is a circle to uh, complex numbers, now. Yes. yes. So still, do we have to take it two times? Yes. Uh, thus, okay. the entries are coming from the... You can see the entries are coming from the complex number. So whenever you want to fill a Hermitian matrix, you know that all the diagonal elements are the real numbers. So in the real number, there is a basis only one element. All elements are the scalar multiplication of this. You, you yes. know about the basis, yeah? Yes, ma'am. But on, in the C, there is a two options, one and iota. Okay now the these elements like these elements you can fill any complex number if there will be one then there will be one if i am putting here iota then it will be there minus iota so they are on on these entries on upper triangular matrix on these elements you can you have two choices in the form of the real number as well as in the non-real that is complex imaginary part okay okay so what i am saying here like you have a matrix this type of this matrix so the diagonal elements are filled by the R, real numbers r okay now on this element you have two options similarly on this you have two mm -hmm. and two but first mm -hmm. we have calculated the positions that is there is a 1, there is a 2. That is 1 plus 2. And this okay. formula are coming from the n cross n matrix. Okay. Got it my point? Oh, there is okay, an n cross okay. n matrix. Yeah, On the diagonal element, there will be the n, n elements. On the yeah. upper diagonal, there will be n minus 1 positions. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, in, yeah, first, okay, in first, I have calculated the number of the positions. And then I have calculated the number of the choices. That's why I have multiplied with the 2. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. So this is the question which is from the system of the linear equation. That is, uh, matrix is given 1, uh, that is 1, 1, 1, 0, minus 1, 1, 2, 3, alpha. And I'm making this as an augmented matrix 3, 1, and beta. Applying the elementary or row operations, 
आई एम राइटिंग दिस मैट्रिक्स एज दिस टू माइनस टू जीरो थ्री माइनस टू वन एल्फा माइनस टू एंड बीटा माइनस सिक्स सिमिलरली वन 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 थ्री जीरो माइनस वन 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 एडिंग दिस दिस जीरो एल्फा माइनस वन एंड बीटा माइनस फाइव so the uh, the last row contains alpha minus 1 and beta minus 5 so the possible options are if alpha equals to 1 then it will become 0 and beta equals to 5 then it also becomes 0 and it will case of this less than n so it will give the infinite solution you are familiar with this in the second option this is the first option in the second option what says if lambda equals to 1 and beta is not equal to uh lambda is not equal to 1 and beta beta can be any number if lambda is not equal to 1 then it will become a non zero then the rank of a equals to rank of a commuted b and e equals to n it will give the unique solution so we will go to the option at least one solution for any alpha and beta unique solution for any beta when alpha is not equal to 1 so what it has given if alpha is not equal to 1 and beta is any real number there is a unique solution this is the second case if alpha is not equal to 1 it will become the non zero here and it will when it will become the non zero the rank of a equals to the rank of a is augmented b and it will become the rank of 3 the number of variables and it will it gives the unique solution the option b is correct no solution for any alpha no solution for any alpha this is a wrong because whenever alpha is not equal to 1 it will gives the unique solution infinitely many solution for any alpha it is also a wrong at least one solution for any alpha no when when i take alpha 1 and beta equals to uh, 5 beta is not equal to 5 it will gives the no solution so this option is also discarded from this option when i take the alpha 1 and beta is not equal to 5 it gives the no solution in this case we don't have any solution so this uh, option says at least one solution so this is the wrong clear so the next question is Which of the following subset of R four is the basis of R four? So the basis, you have to check the L, L, uh, vector should be the L I and it will be the generating set. Okay, you know the definition of the basis. Now you have to check the uh, these sets whether they are basis or not. So R dimension of R four equals to four and the basis B one B two B three contains four elements. so we have just to check the li conditions okay the first is 100 1100 1110 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. you can easily change into the ref 1 minus 1010 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 Easier so, to say that determinant is one. Ah, uh, can you repeat? Isn't it easier to say that determinant is one? Determinant is one. Yes, you can say also the determinant is one. That is, these are the li vectors. So the basis B one is the basis of R four. Similarly, you can check B two as well and B three. Ah, uh, this is very ah uh, simple question. You can easily check. or should i have to show you the how to check are you all familiar with this concept li or ld similarly one the next is 100 1200 that is 
when uh, student ask their determinant is one that is determinant when determinant is non zero uh, the non singular matrix and non singular matrix the all eigen values are non zero and all these matrix uh, all these vectors are the li we can say that so this b1 becomes the basis similarly you can see the next option b4 here also the determinant is non zero the b4 also a uh, basis of r4 similarly you can check the b3 by writing this 2100-5500 and it will become you will see that the rank of b3 less than 4 then it will become the ld okay the option will be the b1 and b2 but not b3 so uh, there is a question let mn belongs to r be a real vector space of l n cross n matrices with real entries a belongs to mnr consider the subspace w of mnr spanned by these i n a a square and so on then the dimension of w over r is necessarily so in this question uh, uh, whether you have to check i a a square and so on so there is a no uh, there is no matrix is given to you any specific matrices so you have to check when you have given a matrix you have to check whether a is a um, scalar multiplication of the identity if it is multiplication of identity then dimension will be the one if it is not then dimension is two and similarly you can check the further a square a cube and so on but this is a general question so in which given as i n a a square and the so on so a is a n cross n matrix like you have familiar with the characteristic equation so the whenever like i'm saying a cross, cross uh, two cross two so a square is always a linear combination uh, like i'm saying lambda i plus mu, mu a you know na whenever there is a two cross two matrix its characteristic equation is always in the form of a square and a square can be written as the linear uh, linear combination of i and a okay so the, the uh, dimension of if i am saying in this example the dimension of this a a square can maximum 2 0 1 or 0 similarly in the case of n cross n the dimension of this set at most n it may be n n minus 1 n minus 2 2 1 0 so the option d will be the correct you got my point but i am trying to say that highest order always can be written as a linear combination of their preceding powers what it so there so it the set of this i a a square a n can maximum the rank of this set will maximum will be the n so we can write here that dimension of w over r is necessarily necessarily at most n it might be a 0 1 2 and up to n got my point so we can write dimension of w is less than equal to n the next question is let m is greater than 1 and n is greater than 1 be integer and let a b m cross n matrix such that for some m cross n one matrix b one the equation has infinitely many solutions so what we have given m a is m cross n matrix x is n cross one and b is m cross one matrix and it is given that it has infinitely many solutions so we can write rank of a equals to rank of a augmented b1 
this is the b1 is less than equal to n because it has given infinitely many solution okay now now they are asking let b2 denote m cross 1 matrix different from b1 then ax b2 has now they are asking what will be the solution of ax equals to b2 so the possible cases the first case is rank of a a augmented b2 it is given as rank of a is always less than n okay now the condition first case is whether rank of a equals to rank of a augmented b2 and the second is rank of there will be a possible condition rank of a is not equal to rank of a b2 because b2 is a new vector here so the con in this condition it is always less than n if rank of a equals to rank of a augmented b2 then it will give the infinitely many solution okay when rank of a is not equal to rank of a augmented b2 it will give the no solution uh it is is it possible that it uh, gives the unique solution tell is it possible it will give the unique solution and the uh, condition mm -hmm. unique solution is this so mm -hmm. the unique solution option is cancel out automatically okay finitely many solution for some b2 uh so the uh, for some b2 all option contains for some b2 so we can write uh, we can take up uh, b2 as a vector in which we have the infinitely many solution conditions so this option will be correct no solution for some b2 finite there is a no option finitely many solutions because uh, there is only three condition whether no or unique or the infinitely and for uh, get the no solution we can also take the uh, b2 as like this wh where rank of a is not equal to rank of a augmented b2 the option c all we also correct got my point so this is the last last question of our this session the let w1 is a sub uh, w1 is a set in which the first uh, or uh, first uh, component is zero and x2 x3 x4 are like this and w2 in which the second component is zero now we, what they are asking be a subspace w1 and w2 are two subspace of r5 and they are asking about the dimension of w1 and intersection w2 okay so you can see uh, you uh, dimension of w1 equals to that is you have only four uh, option you can fill by your own choice that is x2 x3 x4 x5 because you have to uh, put uh, first component should be the zero so there is only four options similarly dimension of w2 is also four but in the case of w1 intersection w2 you have uh, to check in first the first component zero and the second is second component zero so this will be the collection of this type of set x3 x4 and x5 correct because w1 intersection w what w1 says the first component zero and the w2 says the second component zero so in w1 intersection w2 the first two com uh, components should be the zero so you have only the three uh, places in which you have put your uh, any number from the real number r so dimension of w1 intersection w2 should be the three the option three will be the correct answer got it ma'am yes in some previous question you discussed an um, equation to find this right Dimension. 
yes so can you use that in here okay uh so the, uh there is a the, uh, what we have given here in the form of the generating set like so you just when you have this type of conditions you uh you can easily find out the w1 plus w2 dimension okay in the previous question i have i have told you what is the easiest way to calculate the these dimension of these two uh question like w1 plus w2 and w1 intersection w2 whenever you have given a homogeneous system so you will go first you will find the dimension of w1 intersection w2 okay whenever you have the generating set then it will easy to calculate first the dimension of w1 plus w2 but here in the case there is a no such homogeneous system equation so just we easily that find the uh, find the uh, first the w1 intersection w2 and then we find the dimension of w1 intersection w2 there is no homogeneous system so we don't have to calculate uh, the uh, this type of matrices and find the uh, dimension with the help of the formula n minus r okay ma'am thank you yes so whenever you have to find w dimension of w1 intersection w2 and the homogeneous systems are given there you just go with the, this formula n minus r okay and whenever you have given the generating set like in the base, in the form of the basis then you will you uh, you can easily find out the dimension of w1 plus w2 and in in such questions you can see the dimension of w1 is 4 dimension of w2 is 4 and you can easily find out that w1 intersection w2 is o, the uh, collection in the form of this the first two components 0 and x3 x4 x5 0 this is the easiest method which i am uh, telling you so uh, this is the, that is the uh, two first two components become 0 so there is only three options here so you can easily find out the dimension of w1 intersection w2 got it yes got it okay so this is the all from my side any questions from your side you can ask uh, ma'am can i suggest some, some question yes you can ask uh, one we can actually click it as x equal to zero that's uh, the much thing i uh, can you repeat i quickly there is a, some disturbance w1 you can write w1 x1 equal to 0 that's the homogeneous equation for w1 yes oh you uh, you are saying this that is x1 equals to 0 that is 5 minus 1 equals to 4 yeah. and minus r condition yes uh, and w2 you can write it as x2, x2 equals, equals to 0 uh, so now uh, as combined uh, to la restrictions ma'am uh can you repeat combine the two la restrictions for intersection oh like you are saying this x10 that is 1000001 yeah you can solve this type of equation like this okay now i have that my is n minus r that is 5 minus 3 5 minus 2 equals to 3 so you can also get w1 intersection w2 uh, now uh, i have a doubt okay i'll i'll ask in the end so after other uh what you have asked i have a doubt but uh, i'll ask that doubt after others clear their doubts okay okay Okay, thank you, Bini, for this nice session with a good collection of problems. Uh, dear participants, now it is a time for feedback. You can share your feedback. Good afternoon, yes. ma'am. Good afternoon, yeah. sir.
Ma'am, your session was really nice. The collection of questions was really from the broader area, from Jam, Gate, and Net, everything. It was really fantastic. Your uh, solutions that you explained to us, it was uh, really easy and understandable to us. Thanks a lot for taking out time for us. Thank you. Thank it's you. my pleasure. Thank you, Sikha. Hi, ma'am. Uh, myself, Saumya from Kerala. Um, your class was really nice. It was easy to understand. The problems were like we covered every topic with it, and it was very useful, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Saumya. Uh, hi, ma'am. I'm Shyama Sunilkumar. Uh, I'm third year BSc Math student and Asimbrain Junior School. Um, and today's class was really helpful. It was very easy to understand and I was able to follow most of the answers. Thank you so much for this class. Thank you for listening patiently. Okay, thank you, Shyama. Yes, Dharmendra. Uh, Good morning, sir. Good morning, madam. I am Dharmendra Singh from Karsari, Kaskans, UP. Uh, the problem selection was very nice and the uh, problem was very good uh, for IIT JAM and other exam also. I want to ask about uh, some reference book about uh, linear algebra. Uh, and uh, I want to ask uh, about uh, your research topic. Uh, can you tell some background also? Okay, so uh, the reference book for the linear algebra is the Schomp series, which has a uh, number of problems. You can easily uh, solve this, those problems. And the previous year questions uh, always help you uh, to qualify any exams. And uh, the as per uh, my research area, actually the my research area is related to the artificial intelligence and in which i am uh, developing a model to predict the stress using the uh, psychological uh, uh, psychological characteristics which is which we called as the personality traits so it is the interdisciplinary approach in which we are using the uh, uh, application of the artificial intelligence in which we are dealing with the machine learning and the deep learning and with the help of the psychological concepts also. Okay, ma'am. Uh, for uh, AI and uh, deep learning, what uh, mathematics topic and other topics of uh, computer science are required also? So, uh, so there are the two problems uh, in the machine learning, whether you have to check whether your problem is the regression based problem or it has it is the classification based problems so there are many other algorithms which is based on the whether the problem is regression based or the classification based so uh, on the basis of the problems you have to go through uh, deeply and uh, like on the regression based problems you can use the statistical models and the uh, classification based model there are many algorithms like svm canon and so on so uh, it is related to forecasting time series uh, like that so they uh, like this is the different problem i am not working with a time uh, a series algorithm based problem my problem is related with the classification based problem so thank you okay thank you dharmendra thank you sir yeah thanks hello ma'am hello sir yeah. am i audible yes yes uh, ma'am actually this is a very nice session for me and actually i'm little weak in linear algebra when attending this type of mcq questions now now i got little idea to solve this type of question. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you, Vinod, sir, for providing this type of uh, free sessions for us and the time that you spend for us. Thank you. Thank you, Hasna. Yeah. Others? Hello, ma'am. Yeah. Hello. Hello. I am. 
Hello, ma'am. Uh, I am Dushya, a BSc second year student from Kerala. Uh, I am preparing for IIT Jam exam uh, 2025, and I started my preparation with the topic of linear algebra, and this section helped me a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dushya. Yes, Gayatri. Hello, ma'am. I am Gayatri. Uh, I am doing MS in Mathematics uh, from NIT Calicut. Uh, the class was really nice. Uh, you have explained it, answers of each questions very clearly. And I'm sure that it will be helpful for us to solve more questions in the exam. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. I hope, I hope also it will be helpful you. for you all. Yes. Thank you, Gayatri. Any others? Hello, ma'am. I'm Anandika yeah. and I'm preparing for IIT exam exam. Your session is very nice and a good collection of questions. We are waiting for more classes, ma'am. Thank you, you know, sir and ma'am, for the session. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Anandika. Yes. Hi, sir. Uh, if... Yeah, yes, Harita. Hi, ma'am. Hi, sir. I'm Harita. Uh, I'm an MSc first year student from NIT Calicut. Uh, your session was nice. Uh, it was very necessary, but basic things. And you explained it very well. And thank you for so much for clearing our doubts and all. And thank you. Uh, and I would like to ask you about your JRF preparations. If there is something that you would like to uh, tell us. Oh, uh, so for the JRF preparation, you have to uh, practice more and more uh, with the help of the previous year questions. And first, uh, so and you have not strict like in IIT JAM, the students are strict to two or three disciplines, so uh, they easily can crack the IIT JAM. But in uh, JRF exam, you have to study the all the disciplines. Uh, well because there are many questions which are uh, very easy and you can e from each discipline so um, with the help of easy question you can easily qualify the exam but whenever you drop one or two discipline and uh, uh, the question from those discipline are very easy and it will uh, uh, disadvantage for the all those students who drop those disciplines so uh, do not drop any discipline all uh, at least clear all the basics of all the disciplines so that uh, whenever easy question were asked to you so you can easily give the solution to the uh, that uh, questions so because whenever uh, you drop the easy question you uh, will get out from the merit okay because merit will based on the easy questions so my suggestion is do not drop any disciplines and uh, uh, try and practice more and more questions from the previous year exams. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Karita. Uh, any others? Or I think uh, Harina Ryan. Yeah, yes, she can. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Sorry, ma'am. I got disconnected in between. Uh, ma'am, uh, I am Shikha and uh, I've completed my MSc from BIT Meshra, and, uh, which is in Jharkhand. And uh, right now I'm uh, preparing for NET and GATE. And uh, your session was really wonderful, ma'am. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, thank sir. You, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you, Shikha. You. And uh, once again, thank you, Bini, for being with Math Aspirants. And wish you all the very best and all success in your research. Uh, Thank you, sir. All the very best again. Uh, and uh, for the participants also, all the very best for their exams. Okay, let yeah, us find All the out. best, all of you. Yeah. And do best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let us find up here. So, Benny, hope that you will engage more sessions in the coming time. Yeah, I know yeah, that you... Sir. Yeah, you are too busy with your research and all that, but still, I think whenever you get time, you will certainly help us. <laughs> I'm sure that. Yes, sir. Yeah, sure, sir. Okay. It uh, it also a revision for me also because 
it's a long time to go back with the basic maths and because in uh, research area we don't have any time to uh, spend uh, on solving these questions or getting proof and my uh, research area is all uh, different from the basic maths uh, so it's yeah. like a quite revision for me also thank you sir for giving me this yeah. session yeah okay thank you let us wind up here bye bye okay sir bye bye sir have a nice day